previous video, we created a simple HTTP server that returns static text. Now we're actually going to look at the URL of the request and create a web service that actually does something. So we're going to build a simple web service. I'm going to take the code from our last video here, since it serves as a good skeleton for an HTTP service, and I'm going to start a new file for our math server. Now, what I want this web service to do is going to be a pretty simple service. So I want to be able to pass it URLs like slash add slash two slash two, and it will add the numbers two and two together. And we'll have different operations like subtraction, multiplication, and division. So it's going to take two values and an operation and then perform that operation on those two values. So it should be pretty straightforward to implement. So the first thing you want to do is figure out how to actually read our path name because that's where the specification for what service we want to perform is held. So let's fire this up and see what we get right now. So we're just going to call node math server.js and we get our server up and running and switch to our browser and we see our code from last time. So let's try to type in a URL here like add uh, 4 plus 4. So we just get the same string back because right now our code doesn't actually even look at the URL. So how can we get that information out? Well, we can look at the documentation, but let's just take a look at the request object because I'm sure that the information about the URL is probably in there. So I'm going to use the sys.puts method and inside of that I'm going to call sys.inspect. And what inspect does is it takes an argument and it will return a string representation that allows you to see inside that object. So I'm just going to inspect our request here. And we'll see if we can't find out where the actual path here is stored inside of our request object. So I'm going to save it out and we'll go ahead and restart the server because we changed the code. And let's refresh this page. All right, so now we see a huge dump, which is all of the attributes that are in the request object. And somewhere in here, we should probably see something that looks like our add 4, 4. So in the request.url attribute, we get this string that's add 4, 4. So let's try to use that. So switching back to our code, let's set up some variables inside of our request here. So var, and we'll split our URL on the slashes to get the different parts of it. So we'll just say parts equals the request.url dot split and we'll split it on the slash. So let's take a look at what those parts are. So down here we'll inspect it and we'll go ahead and restart our server and refresh the page to send the request again. And so we see actually two items here. The first one looks like our original request where we get, because there is a leading slash, the first element is a blank string, and then we get the add string, the for string, and the for string. And you'll see there's another one down here. There must have been another request in the background for the favicon, and that'll be important in a second. So let's try to get the operation from this parts variable. So we saw that our op would be in parts sub 1 because 0 was our empty string and then index 1 would be the name of our operation. And then we'll go ahead and say a is parts sub 2 and b is parts sub 3. So to be able to handle different operations, we're probably going to just want to create some different functions to handle the add, sub, multiply, and divide services. So actually at the top of the document here, I'm going to create an object called operations. And it'll have the keys be the name of the operation, so add. And the value will be a function that takes a and b and does that operation. So we're going to return a plus B. And so you can imagine the other ones are going to be pretty similar, so we'll just add those in real quick. So our subtraction will subtract A from B, our multiplication will multiply, and our division will divide. So instead of just getting the string part of the operation, we actually want to look it up in this table. So we're going to say operations 
and this part should be a string that's either add, sub, mul, or div. And so op will now actually be a function that takes two arguments and returns the result of that operation. You'll notice all of our functions are expecting numeric values, so there's plus, minus, multiply, and divide. But right now, our parts are going to be strings. So what we actually want to do is call parse int on this. We'll do it with a radix 10 just to be sure. And we'll do the same thing down here. And this will make sure that our a and b are integer values. So now all we need to do is get our result. So we'll say var result equals, so we'll take our operation, which is a function, pass it a and b. And I'm going to actually change this up a little bit. I want this to return a text slash plane. And we can get rid of this right call here. And let's just try to return our result. So I'm going to flip over here, and let's go ahead and kill this server. Clear out this buffer, and we'll start again. And let's see how far we've made it through this code. So let's go ahead and refresh it. And so we see web page not available. Something probably went wrong. So let's take a look. And here is the error stack. And we see that I accidentally put parentheses instead of square brackets. I meant to do a lookup, not a function call. So let's just change that. That should be an obvious one. And let's get to the other error. So I'm going to go ahead and restart the server and refresh it. And we still have a problem. So here we get that the first argument must be a string, array, or buffer. And that's on line 27 here. So we found out that. Here, we can't pass a number because the operation returns a number, but this has to be a string or a, a buffer or an array. So we can cast this to a string really easily just by you know, concatenating it to a null string. It's one of the easiest ways to do that. So now let's go ahead and restart our server and clear this out and refresh. And let me make this a little bit bigger. So we can see add 4, 4 did 8. Now let's try adding 4 plus 6, and we'll notice that it crashed. Now it actually crashed before we made our call. And that's because this operation here wasn't a function. So how could that happen? We passed add, it should be a function. Well, you remember that before we saw a request for favicon, and that's because our browser will try to request a favicon from that server. And so it could not find that. So we have to make our code resilient enough to be able to handle those requests. Because as soon as an error happens inside of your server, it's going to crash your entire server. So what we're going to do is say the result, and we're going to test to see if op is a true value. Because if favicon or some other string got passed to the operations look up here, op will be null. So if it's true, we'll use the ternary operator here. We'll perform the operation. Otherwise, we'll return, let's say, error. And so now we can start up our server. And let's load this up. And we see 10. And hopefully we can get more than one request. So let's do 10 plus 6 equals 16. And let's try our other operations out. So let's multiply 10 by 6, we get 60. If we divide. We get 1.6667, and we subtract 6 from 10, and we get 4. So there we have a quick and dirty little web service that does some simple math for us. And now we've seen how to create a simple web service. In the next video, we'll create an HTTP proxy by utilizing Node's HTTP client object. Mm -hmm.